Hello. This is a short video about a problem I found uh, on the SC2 lathe affecting the top slide, which I think uh, is a design fault. Um, those of you who are looking for more progress on uh, robot boat, sailing boats, um, I'm still working on the servo, but I'm not yet ready to disclose any further progress. I've got this uh, done up quite tight, so it doesn't have much movement, but if you look at it very closely, you might be able to see very slight movement here or at the gib. So basically, I can't afford to make it any looser than that. So I've got it done as up as tight as I reasonably can, but I can still move it in and out like that. But what I noticed is, uh, if we look at this micrometer dial, which of course is a friction coupling to the handle and the shaft, um, if I move it this way, the micrometer moves correctly with the handle and the shaft. But if I move it that way, it does not. Whereas, on the uh, cross slide, it moves correctly. So I wondered why that was. And uh, I seem to be in a situation where I either got to have the top slide too loose from the point of view of unwanted movement in order to allow this micrometer dial to move as it should do. And I looked at the design of it and discovered there's a fundamental design mistake here which isn't present in the top slide, which isn't present in the cross slide. If we look at the cross slide, you've got a screw that if we turn it clockwise comes out and if you turn it down clockwise it goes in. Now that movement is constrained by this flange here which if I turn it anti-clockwise bears upon this surface and if I turn it clockwise it bears upon this surface here which is bolted to the rest of the thing. So the movement in and out of this spindle is constrained by this flange operating between this surface and that surface. And in fact there is very little backlash in that but um, therefore as we turn the spindle what actually happens is that the cross slide moves rather than the spindle moving which is absolutely fine. Because of that arrangement, when I put the additional components on the, the micrometer dial and uh, the handle, uh, there is no force applied on that dial as I turn this. The force is taken on the flange in here rather than on that dial, so which is explains why it works correctly. If we look at the top slide, we have exactly the same arrangement uh, with a spindle and a flange on it and as I rotate the spindle anti-clockwise that flange bears upon this surface here which is bolted which is bolted to the top slide and thus as I turn this anti-clockwise the top slide is pulled to the right. The problem lies in the fact that when I turn this clockwise there is absolutely nothing restraining, restraining that flange. See, we've got free air here. There's nothing restraining the flange. Uh, whereas on the uh, cross slide it was bearing upon a surface. And it's that absence of restraint as I turn this clockwise which causes the problem. Because when we put these other components on I just fit it temporarily 
So in this peculiar arrangement, if I turn this anti-clockwise, that flange that we saw bears upon this, which is bolted to that, and therefore it drags the top slide to the right. But if I turn it clockwise, the flange is bearing on nothing, and so uh, force in this direction is being applied via these two surfaces here. The handle is pushing on that washer, which is pushing on that, which is pushing on that. And so whether or not this turns depends on whether this friction, which is provided by a spring, as you know, inside here, whether that friction is greater or less than the friction between here and here as we try and push the top slide to the left. Obviously, the tighter I do this up, the more force between these two surfaces, the greater this friction, and that's why this micrometer dial is not turning as it should do. We can see that if we look underneath. Looking at this underneath, when we turn the screw anti-clockwise, this flange bears upon that, which is bolted to the top slide and therefore drags the top slide to the left. But when we turn it clockwise, there is absolutely nothing restraining this flange. Um, therefore the handle pushes this micrometer against that. That's, what, that's how the top slide is moved to the left. What there should be is a piece of metal here fixed to the top slide to which that flange can engage just as there is on the cross slide as I showed you earlier. So whoever designed this top slide arrangement um, simply forgot that there needs to be constraint in both directions. This, this shaft needs to be constrained in both directions and fi not fixed but uh, so that the flange can apply a force to the top slide and they've just forgotten that. So what I've done in an attempt to fix this uh, problem is I've made this little block which just bolts on to the underside of the top slide at the right hand end by means of these two holes that I've tapped there and uh, the screw fits in there and this flange is now trapped between these two pieces of metal so if I unscrew the screw this one drags the top slide that way and if I screw it in this one pushes the top slide that way thereby removing all the pressure on the uh, micrometer. Um, the downside of this is that I've had to cut this much off the gib and therefore I have uh, a centimetre less movement to the right, to the left, sorry. But I don't think that's very important because I never actually want to use the top slide pushed fully to the left. Um, if I did, I suppose I could get another gib and just unbolt these and uh, go back to the status quo ante. Well, I've fitted that and now I can uh, tighten the top slide as much as I like and it still does not move this indexing ring, which is good. The backlash that you can see there is the backlash between the flange, which is the flange on the shaft, which is captured between here and the piece of metal that I've inserted. I just say it's the backlash between this flange on the shaft and uh, this piece of metal and that piece of metal, both of which are bolted to the top slide. I could reduce that by putting a shim washer in, but I'm not much bothered about it. Uh, the important thing is that I've solved that problem with the indexing uh, disc.